Privacy policies are notoriously long, boring, and difficult to understand. For instance, the privacy policy for Southwest Airlines is over 6,000 words long and has a flesh reading E score of 30. What does that mean? It means it is written at a reading level less than 5% of adults can read, and for those few who can, their average reading speed for content at this level is between 100 to 200 words per minute, so it would take around 30 to 60 minutes to read it. Now imagine having to read a dozen such privacy policies to find the airline with the best privacy policy, and you start to get an idea of just how time-consuming this would be. Is it any wonder people get frustrated and don't even bother trying to read privacy policies? In this video, I'm going to explain a better way of comparing privacy policies to choose companies that do a better job of respecting and protecting your privacy. I am also going to describe an ambitious project I am starting that you can participate in to start the process of reclaiming our right to privacy. I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor and a former Indiana State Representative, and this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. I've read numerous comments on my recent privacy videos asking variations of one fundamental question, what can we do? That is a great question, and here is my four-step plan of action to help everyone start reclaiming their right to privacy. Step one is raising awareness about the companies and laws that are violating our privacy and making the case about why this is an important issue people should care about. I am currently doing this to the best of my ability by making these videos and doing public speaking events to help achieve this goal. You can help by sharing these videos, and if you need a speaker for your club, meeting, or event, email me at businessreform at proton.me. Step two is creating tools to help people make more informed choices about the companies they do business with so they can factor privacy into their decision-making process, along with other considerations such as price, quality, and convenience. I will elaborate on this in a moment and explain what I'm working on and how you can help. There is zero doubt in my mind that you and I can accomplish steps one and two. If we do them well enough and enough people start using these tools, step three takes care of itself. Step three is some companies will realize they are losing business because of their privacy practices, and they will start modifying those practices to attract and retain privacy-conscious customers. Today, companies sell our data because not enough people are paying attention to what those companies are doing. It's basically free money to them. But if enough people start actively caring about their privacy and making their purchasing decisions, at least in part based on privacy considerations, companies will take notice and respond because we will be speaking their language, money. And the cost of lost business over violating our privacy will be more than what they're making from collecting and selling our data. There is one more thing we can do, and that is to encourage people to contact their legislators both state and federal, and demand comprehensive privacy legislation be enacted to rein in the data broker industry. But that is a topic for another video. For now, let's get back to the topic of creating tools to help people easily understand privacy policies so they can make more informed purchasing decisions. There is a direct parallel to the growing interest in protecting our privacy, and that is the growing public interest on the impact of nutrition on health throughout the 1950s and 1960s. This was at a time when America was experiencing a dramatic increase in the rate of deaths from heart disease. In 1968, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration proposed regulations for nutrition labeling on packaged foods. And five years later, in 1973, the FDA published a final rule requiring nutrition labels on most packaged foods. However, it was seven years later, in 1980, before that rule took effect, requiring nutrition labels on most packaged foods sold in the United States. And this is what the first generation of nutrition labels looked like. And they also looked like this. And sometimes they looked like this. In other words, there wasn't much standardization. So a decade later, in 1990, Congress passed the Nutritional Labeling and Education Act to standardize nutrition labels. 
Then in 2006, the FDA got around to planning updates to nutrition labels to reflect new dietary guidelines. And just 14 years after that, in 2020, large food manufacturers were required to start using nutrition labels we all are familiar with today. In other words, the journey from growing public concerns over nutrition to today's mandatory nutrition labels took roughly 70 years. Would love to see Congress require nutrition label style summaries included in all privacy policies. I really don't want to wait 70 years for that to happen. Thankfully, there are things we can do now to make those privacy labels available in months instead of decades. I have mixed emotions about artificial intelligence in general, and specifically, I do not trust artificial intelligence for anything related to politics. However, one thing AI excels at is summarizing long, complex documents. I am currently refining prompts in ChatGPT to create nutrition label-style summaries of privacy policies, like this one from Southwest website. This is not the final form of what the privacy label will look like, but the final version will include sections about what types of data is collected, how it's used, who it is sold or shared with, whether you have the ability to opt out of the data collection, and some information regarding the company's history on data breaches. My goal is to create a free website that will make this type of privacy information easily accessible to everyone on all airlines, hotels, car rental companies, automakers, etc. The website would not collect anyone's data, and it will be supported by voluntary donations so no memberships will be required to use the site. This is a very ambitious project, and I am looking for people who are interested in collaborating with me to define exactly what the privacy label should include and how to organize the website to make it easy for people to find and compare privacy information. Please leave your suggestions in the comments section of this video, and if you want to collaborate with me, please email me at businessreform at proton.me. I am doing all I can making these videos, so I would greatly appreciate it if you could help me out by sharing these videos with your friends. If we get enough people to care about their privacy to the point it influences purchasing decisions, we can make companies rethink their privacy practices. If you appreciate this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.